Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Browning Auto 5 shotguns. So I've got five Browning Auto 5s on the bench here, from the very old to the very new, and we're gonna talk a little bit about each model, and also how each of these guns have been used across five generations in my family. Stay tuned. So today we're talking about the Browning Auto 5 shotguns, or A5s as they're commonly referred to. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Browning A5 platform, that is their inertia-driven semi-automatic shotgun. It's been in production for well over 100 years. Uh, it's always been popular with sportsmen, primarily due to the reliability of that inertia-driven system. And then also that signature humpback design on the receivers, which makes it easy to quickly acquire your target or game. So with that, we're gonna cover a few of these here. The first one I'm gonna start with is this particular shotgun, uh, which is a Browning A5 16 gauge. Uh, this particular shotgun is a 1926 model. And this shotgun belonged to my great-grandmother, Lucy Jeffords Gibson. And uh, she and her sister, Clara Jeffords Humphrey, they both hunted prairie chickens and duck commercially in the sand hills of Nebraska. Uh, so they did that right at the headwaters of the Dismal River uh, at a place known called Cody Lake. And actually, if you look that up now, it's called Jeffords Lake, if you find it on a map. Uh, so they did that as supplemental income in the uh, early 1900s. Uh, so it's kind of neat to think that my great grandmother used this shotgun uh, in those early years. Uh, so this particular shotgun, obviously being a Browning A5-16, uh, one of the thing on these older shotguns is you cannot shoot a uh, modern steel shot through these barrels. They're not designed for that, so we have to shoot lead through shotgun like this. Uh, another thing that's unique about this is the chamber size on this. So in these, some of these older ones, this is a 2 and 9 16 inch chamber. So it's not the traditional two and three quarter inch chambering that you would find in a lot of other shotguns, uh, but it's still a really cool old shotgun. Uh, so on that, so we do still have one box of old two and nine sixteenths inch shot shells, which are getting harder and harder to find, but uh, they are still out there and can still be found. This is what one of those old shells looks like. So they're getting harder to find and they're a little more expensive when we do find them. Uh, the next one we're gonna, look at here is this Browning Auto 5 12 gauge. Uh, so this one is a Browning Auto 5 12 gauge lightweight model. So even though it's a little bit bigger and bulkier, uh, it's still really lightweight, shoulders really quickly. You can swing that barrel nice and quick and get on a rooster. Uh, this particular shotgun belonged to my granddad, Bud Gibson, and he passed it down to my dad in 1966 when he was 15 years old. Uh, so this gun's also been in the family for a very long time there. Needle shotgun, this is also an FN series Belgian model with the round knob. And this one's actually on the butt plate there. You can see it says FN on it, which is a signature of those Belgian made Browning Auto 5s. Really neat old shotgun. One thing to note on these older Auto 5s as well is the safety mechanism. So instead of a traditional cross bolt safety back here that you would find on modern shotguns, the safety is actually this slider switch at the front of the trigger guard. So something a little different on those. And then next we've got, we start moving into the more modern auto fives or a fives as they're now called. So this is a shotgun I picked up a few years ago. This is a Browning a five sweet 16 Upland edition. And one thing unique about the a five sweet 16 Upland edition is that it has that brush nickel receiver on it which looks really sharp. It's got a Turkish walnut stock, so it's kind of got a matte finish to it, a little bit lighter color, color than a lot of the walnut stocks. Uh, but it has a 26 inch blue barrel on it, uh, but this thing is super light. I think it weighs in at a whopping five pounds, 12 ounces, so it shoulders and swings really quickly. Uh, this is my shotgun of choice anytime I go pheasant hunting, so great gun there. And then the next one back here is another Browning Auto 5 Sweet 16. So this is nearly identical to that Upland Edition with the exception of this one having a, a blued receiver. But it also has the 26 inch barrel. This one has a more traditional gloss uh, walnut stock to it. 
And this particular shotgun belongs to my oldest son, Lee. Uh, we got this for him just this last year on his 14th birthday. So uh, this would be his new shotgun. And then lastly, we've got one more Browning Auto 5 Sweet 16. You're probably going, geez, that looks just like the last one. Well, it does look very similar to the last one with a couple of exceptions here. This Browning A5 Sweet 16 is the what's called the Lightning Edition. And one of the main design elements of this is the round knob. Uh, so that is kind of a throwback to the traditional design of these older Belgian-made Auto 5s like I showed you earlier with the round knobs. Uh, so this shotgun brings back that design element with the round knob. Uh, but other than that, this shotgun is just like the other one with the 26 inch blue barrel. It has some beautiful marbling in that walnut stock though, uh, which is why I could not let this one get away. It was just such a beautiful gun. So pick that one up, another beautiful Browning Auto 5. So if you're ever in the market for a new shotgun, I encourage you to check one of these out when you get to the store, throw one up to your shoulder and feel how great they are. Uh, they are just super great shotguns. And like I said, so that is five Browning Auto 5s. A uh, quick look at those and how we've been using them through five generations in our family. So that's all we had. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you on the next one.